We are optimistic, positive, and excited about chiropractic. We're excited about reaching people with our practices and building an exceptional life of productivity and prosperity and generosity. While we're filled with love, fitness-centered, and of course, having fun. Our purpose is to become smarter, more powerful, capable, and driven, and superior versions of ourselves. By ever increasing our awareness, knowledge, understanding, motivation, hands-on skill, communication skill, and mastery in the art of exceptional living. Every single podcast with me, Tori, the chiropractic practice success consultant, hey, it's going to cause you to naturally attract great new patients. High value cases. Your favorite type of people to have in. You're becoming a more capable motivator and a persuader of people. You're empowered right now to make smarter, long-term decisions. You're energized physically. You're energized mentally. And, of course, we want you to be energized financially. And that's going to happen every time we train. Speaking of training... Big training this last weekend. People raving about it. Never had so many emails. Oh, that was so great. The training revolved around a few words. I'll be brief. We'll jump into our topic. Exciting topic today. Self-analysis. The words were consequence. Consequences. A pilot screws up. Devastating consequences. You're jumping out of a plane with a parachute. You screw up. Devastating consequences. It would be easy for a chiropractor to go, oh yeah, well that's them. Oh really? If you're lazy, don't memorize your scripts. Don't get your office ready. Don't have the right equipment in place. Don't assemble the team. Study, clinical excellence, communication skill, image, team huddle, team meeting, money flow, debt elimination, counting, payroll, marketing, promotion, consult, exam, report system. The consequences are devastating. Millions of dollars lost. Thousands of people not helped by your hands. My time in the military, I use it because I look at everything as though there's life and death consequences. That's why I take everything so seriously. That's why I get excited. I get wound up. I get wound up because it frustrates me when I see other chiropractors not taking it as seriously as they should because of the consequences. Quick story. Planes are coming back to the airfield, World War II. Bullet holes in the sides of the planes. The engineers and the People look at this and say, oh, here's what we need to do. We see where the bullet holes are. We better put more armor on those surfaces as we make new planes. Oh, great idea. Really? The armor needs to go where there are no bullet holes. Because those planes that got shot in those areas, they're the ones that didn't come back. See the different levels of awareness? Ah, there's the bullet holes. That's where we need to put protective stuff. No. No. We We have to engineer our protective elements on the planes that we don't see. The ones that don't come back. In everything you do, 
There's what you see, and then there's what is really happening. I am here to show you what's really happening. And I'm trying to get chiropractors to understand really how massive the consequences are. Another word in that training was tolerate. Tolerate mediocrity. Tolerate laziness. Another word was volunteer. We have to volunteer to get stuff done. Really think about this now. Look at the pilot. The pilot has to go through certain training, has to meet qualifications, has to be certified, has to go through a checklist before every flight. So they're so excellent. Once you graduate from chiropractic college, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to study. You don't have to learn any procedures. You don't have to advance your communication skill. You don't have to maintain physical fitness. You don't have to become better at being an employer. You don't have to learn anything about money. You have to volunteer for all of it. The pilot doesn't volunteer. They have to. They're forced to do it. Chiropractic college. You're forced to take these exams. You're forced to have to pass the classes. You're forced to have to study for the national boards because if you don't pass, there's what? Big consequences. Then you graduate. Who's forcing you to do anything now? Nobody. And that's why so few chiropractors are successful because your whole life you had to have someone crack the whip to get you to do anything. And when you had to sit there and crack the whip on yourself, the whip collects dust. Another word for that training was potential. There's you right now and there's what your potential actually is. I'm here to try to help people reach their potential. By what? Making us realize there's big consequences. Let's not tolerate being average. Let's put in some study and time. I'm here early making this podcast for free. Study, preparation, I'm ready to go. I had to. I volunteered to do this. I don't have to do a podcast ever in my life. I've just said, mm, I put together the oomph to do it. I volunteered to do it. Here it is. And I'm going to volunteer to make this into a video and put it on a YouTube channel. I'm going to volunteer, right? I'm just going to say, I've just decided to go and do this and get stuff done. No one has to tell me to do it. What I wished I would have had time for during this training is to make the parallel between these two things. In school, you're told what to do, where you have to be, what the requirements are. If you're in sports, be here for this practice, wear this to the game, show up for this team meeting. Okay, Here's the place. You're told what to do. You get out of school and you have to tell yourself what to do. You have to make up your own artificial deadlines. I'm not leaving today until I have the script memorized. I'm not leaving today until that flyer is done perfectly. I'm not leaving today until my new patient calls are done. You have to volunteer to create your own deadlines. And here's the trouble in the world today. The evil system. And it got uber evil the second we went to the smartphone and they could put a screen in front of everybody's face. Is It is programmed everybody to be incapable of mustering the oomph and the energy and the drive to go and do something great. Tell me it's not true. Parachute doesn't work because of a mistake. The consequences, well, you're dead. Pilot makes a big... Well, you're dead, and so are 300 people. Chiropractor doesn't seem to realize that that's what their life is like. But many chiropractors, as I record this right now, I'm telling you on the inside are spiritually dead, and it's everything I can do to not yell it and pound on my desk at the same time. Their will in the inside of their being is blanking dead. They do not have the ability to go out and kill, get the work done. And kill is a positive term to be aggressive and work hard and study and prepare and be first. Reach people, learn this, get to the events. 
I've got people that need it more than anything, but they will not get themselves to a Winner's Edge boot camp because they're going to be forced to work and they rebel against work. They seek leisure all day long because their cell phone is programmed them and the school system and the TV has programmed them to be ineffective. I'm telling you, there are people running around and on the inside, their will is dead. In fact, their will is broken. You've heard that term before. Oh, he's sort of a broken man. What's broken? Their will. The system out there is trying to break your will and get you to be lazy and get you to be filled with doubt and get you to be filled with fear, get you to be disappointed, get you to be anxious, get you to be nervous, get you to make bad health decisions, get you to see that versus I on God's side of the plan. I want you to have a strong will and a strong and vivid imagination and very, very sharp intuition and your memory is incredible, and your ability to reason and be level-headed and stable and solid psychologically and lucid is at the highest level. So you can be generous and you can be powerful and you can be loving and caring and, and, and cool. God's side of the equation for maximum high-performance living versus the other side. And very sadly, and the most sad thing I ever see, I'll get to the topic in a minute, people. Hang on. The saddest thing I ever see is when I see people listen to the devil who's whispering in their ear and he starts to lure them astray and cause them to drift and, be, and move away from the God's design and God's plan for them in their life. And it's so sneaky the appeals are so, oh, so disguised. Remember now, the dark forces in the world masquerade as ministers of righteousness. It'll be a family member. It'll be a friend. The people that are led astray by those who they think are looking out for their best interests is remarkable. Stay close. Let's stay close. Summing up there, there's consequences. You can't tolerate averageness. You have to volunteer to make deadlines and volunteer to get the work done. Why? So you can continue to go to reaching your potential. Here's the final question. Is it possible that someone could walk into your office, tell you to go home, and in 90, 180 days, be collecting way more than you? Is that possible? And the answer is yes. So that means there's potential. That's the exciting part. That's why we're training today. Realize your potential. What you're capable of. Hey, you can see a few more people. We can get that fee structure modified and bring that collection per visit up. You can help more. You can do better. You can be more generous. You can give more. Your workouts can have a little bit more intensity. Your workouts might have a little bit more frequency. When he says do 12, I'm going for 13 or 14. There's times he says do 12 and I can barely get the 12. Let's not leave success on the table. Topic today. Steve Siebold author of an interesting book, How Rich People Think. Let's take a look at this. This gentleman spends about 30 years studying millionaires around the world. What separates them from everybody else? Says it has little to do with money itself. It's about their mentality. No surprise. I got a list here. 50 points. Making the comparison between middle class thinking, even lower class and lower middle class thinking. And he compares it to what he calls world class. That's just a nicer way of saying upper class, upper, upper middle class. But we'll use his terms. 
It's his information. Tremendous respect. Assembling this so we can learn. Middle class people. Focus on how to save money. Quote, uh, being cheap. World class people focus on earning. Increasing income. Must increase income, period. If your income is not increasing, you need to stop immediately. Join the Winner's Edge group. If you're already in Winner's Edge and your income is not increasing, it's time to re-engage. Get on a call with me. Get to the events. Get closer. You get closer to the Winner's Edge fire, you're going to have to heat up. That's what I'm here to do, here to help you. And if you're outside the group, I'd love to help you too. Middle class think about money in linear terms. World class think about money in non-linear terms. I work and then I get paid versus I work and I get paid, but I also have these in investments that produce dividends and have these investments that pay me this interest and I have this investment that pays me this. Middle class believe hard work creates wealth. Well, the world class believe that too, but they also believe that leverage creates wealth. There's a family here that owns a chain of gas stations Started years ago with one guy with a little filling station in a small town. Then he built another one, another one. Now they have a hundred of them. None of them are actually working in the stations. You've got a manager, assistant managers for each station, employees. Leverage. In chiropractic, it's difficult to do because we're a specialist. See, the surgeon cannot leverage other surgeons normally if they're a specialist. Like, I'm a specialist. But we have to leverage as much as we can with equipment and with team. We've got ways to do that in Winner's Edge. In fact, our ways to use leverage, really one of the reasons why the Winner's Edge chiropractor is destined to be the most wealthy. Middle class believe money is the root of all evil. Take uh, biblical terms out of context. The world class believe that poverty is the root of all evil. Middle class believe that being rich is a privilege, like somehow it just happened, like me, Tori. Somehow I got a different set of state boards that I had to take, and somehow the insurance companies would pay me more when I send in my 98941, and somehow, okay, that uh, more people would just naturally come and see me. And, and then somehow my tax bracket, well, for me, it's less than everybody else. Are you kidding me? The term privilege, the people who are complaining about privilege actually are the ones that are the most privileged. Do you understand that? How backwards things are? What's evil is now worshipped and considered good, and what's good is criticized and will get you kicked out of school? What really brings privilege in the world today is the 100% opposite of what's being told brings privilege in the world today. You just have to see the truth. That's where the example of, oh, the planes came back and there's a bunch of holes in the side. We need to put armor where those holes are. No, the complete opposite is true. You need to put a bunch of armor where there aren't holes because when holes go in those areas of the plane, the plane goes down. The world class believe that being rich is a result of work and effort and right thinking. Middle class believe money is complicated. World class believe money is really pretty simple. Earn, solid, consistent investments, that's pretty much it. Stay the course. Have the discipline to do projects that take a long time. Right? Middle class believe rich people are crooks. World class believe rich people are ambitious. They work harder. They work smarter. Middle class believe building wealth is a solitary effort. The world class really has, realize it takes a team. It takes you. 
It takes me. It takes your accountant. Maybe a few other people. Middle class worries about money. The world class dreams about money and opportunities and generosity and fun. The middle class believe that money is negative. The world class, money is positive. Positive energy. Middle class believe rich people are shallow. World class believes the rich people are strategic and interesting and innovative and fun to be around. I was at an event the other day, sitting next to a gentleman, designs amusement park rides for Disney. Very interesting. No privilege got him there. His hard thinking and creativity got him there. Middle class believe that the road to riches is paved with formal education. The world class believe the road to riches is paved with specific knowledge. I saw a clip the other day. It's a high school girl sitting there. Family hovered around a computer. Opening up an email. Seeing that she just got accepted to Harvard. And they freaked out like they had just received gifts from God Almighty himself. Crying and screaming and hugging and kissing and displaying in a massive outward way their worship of formal education. I made a discovery several years ago. In the boating world, I made this interesting discovery. I had all this formal education. But why is it that that guy has a boat that's cost twice as much as mine and he works half as much as I do? And he's a paint contractor. Never went to college a second of his life. And this other really rich guy over here owns a company that does excavation. And this other rich family over here, they own a company that when bridges need to be destroyed, they come and take all the pieces and put, turn them into scrap metal. And this rich couple over here, okay, the guy with the shaved head and the little mohawk, no college education, owns a huge diesel truck repair and um, modification business. And because he's so good at it, they want him to do all the trucks. And then next thing you know, he's doing deliveries for Amazon. He's got three boats, the cheapest of which is 700000 But I'm the one with all the education. I'm the smart one. You kidding me? You see someone pull up to a gas station in a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or even a Bugatti. Can you talk to them? You're not going to find somebody that has that education was the center of anything. They got really, really good at something and they made a bunch of money doing it. I would say... When it comes to education, becoming a jiu-jitsu black belt and learning how to play the piano or a guitar along with some travel and hanging around successful people and you will have an education that will smoke anybody that's hanging out in, in the indoctrination camp we call modern schooling. Okay, And of course, college these days. If I would have gone back and I would have just mowed lawns, had my friends go to college, and I, instead of going to college, what I could have done is, is still hung out with them on the weekends and gone to the games and gone to the parties. But see, I was I could have been working. And next thing you know, I'm putting in some uh, landscaping for some people. And the next thing you know, that guy owns a business and says, hey, why don't you come do it at my office? Then he's got some other friends that say, hey, why don't you come help? And then I got to buy myself a bobcat to tackle a little bit, little bit bigger project and bring a couple other kids in to work with me. Next thing you know, he wants me to do the whole thing for a whole new building that they're building. And then, of course, the neighborhood. And then everybody in the neighborhood wants me to do their yards. And the next thing you know, I got a huge landscaping business collecting $14 million a year. Instead of sitting there owing $300,000 and having not even started working yet. Specific knowledge. Important in parenting. Grades in school, so what? The worship of, of what other people think you should be good at by memorizing and regurgitating their stuff. What use is that? Tell me. Other than you've been programmed to believe that good grades mean something. Are you kidding me? I'm around a lot of rich people. Probably around more rich people than you. I say that to tell you this. 
They're the most interesting group of people, and education is not at the center of it. Oh, sure, there's the CEOs and some of those people, yes. Okay? But by and large, it's the trades and being an expert in there that will get you richer way faster than education. Just want you to think and have respect here for all, all people and all walks and all levels of education. Right? Middle class believe that money is earned through labor. The world class believe that money is earned through your thinking. Thoughts create feelings, which create actions, which create your results. Middle class think that stuff happens to them. World class people realize they create it through their thoughts. Middle class people don't have control of their thoughts. Their thoughts are controlled. High level people, okay? They're able to originate their own thoughts. Middle class people worry about running out of money. World class are always thinking about how to earn more. Middle class think about spending. World class think about investing. Middle class people get money, spend it. World class people get money, make investment. Middle class people see money through the eyes of emotion. World class see it through the eyes of logic. Do this. Jump on a computer. Go to tradingview.com or Yahoo Finance. I just want you to look up the graph for the S&P 500 index for the last five years. Look at this graph going left to right. And tell me what you see around March and April of 2020. You're going to see this huge dip. The graph just drops off. It's like goes up and just falls off a cliff. Middle class people will look at that and say, oh, well, whatever. The price went down. Rich people will look at it and understand the psychology of and the emotions behind the mass of humanity that caused it. Do you see the difference? Some people just are looking at a graph. I am looking at the mass emotional state of the humanity behind the graph. What caused the numbers and the lines and the chart to look that way? Do you see the difference? Okay. It's like looking at a uh, thing and seeing, oh, I see trees versus looking at it and saying, well, I see houses and money and all the stuff that can be made with the smart use of trees. So what happened there was this. During that whole time in March, uh, April, okay, the price dropped because people were scared Middle class and weak people got scared. They got emotional and foolish and they sold. And then what happened? The smart, quote, rich people bought it when it was cheap and they doubled their money in under two years. Middle class underestimate wealth building power of generating referrals. World class people know that referrals is what creates millionaires. Look at it in chiropractic. The best people you can get are good referred people that start. That's the most efficient, the most enjoyable. They spend time building a referral generating machine versus hanging out here trying to buy new ones and disregarding the tactics required to generate referrals. Middle class focus on leisure and pleasurable stuff. Oh, thank God it's Friday. Oh, I can't wait for the weekend. Oh, I got to go party. Oh, escapism. World-class people focus on money-making. Even if I'm out at a big boating event, I'm dishing out cards. I've made more money out boating. Are you kidding me? Middle-class think money is finite. World-class realize it's infinite. Middle-class earn money doing things they don't like to do. World-class people get rich doing what they love. I love doing everything in a chiropractic office. I love killing the spiders. I love taking out the garbage. I love vacuuming. I love cleaning up the scuffed up walls. I love doing the reports. I love answering the phone. I love paying the bills. I love doing the consultations. Of course, I love giving the adjustments. I love every single thing within the four walls of a chiropractic office. There's nothing in the place that I don't like doing. Everything. The difficult phone calls, the easy phone calls. 
getting up on a ladder to, to install a, a cable so we can hide it, so we can have a TV on the wall, whatever. I like all of it. None of it is work. I haven't worked for 27 or 28 years. I just go and do whatever it is that I do during the day. I have to use the term work so I can relate to normal people. Oh, I got to go to work. I just say that so they kind of understand I'm not going to be at home. But I'm not going, I just, what do you do? I just do whatever it is I do during the day. I'm on a mission. There's a difference between being on a mission and, and going to work. Rich people are on a mission. Middle class people think that rich people are ruthless. World class believe rich people are generous, which they are. Every big thing happened because rich people donated. Rich people are donated the money for the church. They donated the land. They bought this. They saved that. They created even the thing in Pearl Harbor, the big memorial. Elvis is behind that. Middle class have a lottery mentality. Oh, if somebody can just do it for me, if somebody can just give something to me, if I can just get something without earning it, the world class have an action mentality. Go and go to work. Get stuff done. Think. Be smart. Middle class people are waiting to be rescued. The world class people know nobody is coming. Nobody is coming to rescue you. Nobody is coming. You have to do it. Middle class people are sitting there not doing very well, thinking it'll just turn around. I had a chiropractor on the line the other day, 50 years old, still has student loans, not a penny saved. Okay, starting to see the end of the tunnel in his career. And just thinks that somehow it'll just turn around all by itself, even though it hasn't turned around in the last 20 years. See that? Inside, part of his will is what? It's dead. His ability to think. He's deceived. Middle class believe rich people are smarter. World class believe rich people are just more savvy. Okay? A lot of people a lot smarter than me, not doing as well as me. Middle class see money as controlling. World class see money as liberating. Middle class think money changes people. No, no, no. Money reveals the person. You want to find out who someone really is? Give them some money. Money magnifies whoever you already are. Middle class, they work for money. World class, they work for fulfillment, satisfaction, reach. Like me doing this podcast. I'm just doing this because it's fulfilling. I want to reach. I want to share. I want to teach. I'm good at it. I know I'm good at it. So it's my duty to do it. A lot of people, when they're good at something, can't get themselves to share. Middle class believe you have to do something to get rich. World class believe you have to be something to get rich. Middle class plays it safe. World class will take very smart risks, like starting a new business, like a practice, right? Middle class believes you have to have money to make money. The world class believes in using other people's money. Getting a loan for school, that's other people's money. Getting a loan to start a business, that's other people's money. Using a credit card to buy some social media marketing because you're starting out in practice, it's the only, you're using other people's money. That's perfectly fine. Middle class think getting a job is the safest way to earn. Oh my God, you imagine that? How would you like to have a boss? World class believe that outstanding performance, getting good at something, that's the safest way. When you get good at something, people can't live without you. I'll be doing a podcast here. In fact, I'm holding it in my hands right now. Chiropractic Economics Magazine. Got an article in here about... Uh, you know, how many chiropractors are alone and how many are associates and how many have this equipment and that. And I'm telling you, I scanned it. And of course, it's shocking how, how the profession has deteriorated. Over time in chiropractic, should there be more associate chiropractors or less? The answer is there should be less. Should be more people wanting to get out and own their own business. But, of course, that's not, not the way. People seek leisure. 
They want the easy way. Someone else do all the thinking and just give me money. Outstanding performance is the safest way to earn. Middle class believe in financial scarcity. Hey, there's financial abundance. Middle class see money as a weapon. Now nah, money is a tool. Middle class people believe they're not worth, worthy of great wealth. The world class believe that they deserve it because they put in the time and the thinking to deserve it. Look at me. I'm sitting here doing this podcast for, for, for free. Got the research, this, the presentation, the quick time. I got to rip out the audio, pull it over here, upload it to there. All of this work that goes into one, one simple podcast. Why? Well, I do this. I know I deserve to increase my wealth because I'm putting in extra stuff voluntarily. No one had to tell me to do this. Most people in the middle class world, they only do what they're told to do. And even then they're trying to skate. How can I get paid more? for doing the same job, in fact, the same way as I did last year. In fact, how can I get paid more and by slacking off and figuring out you know, how to do the least amount of work for my job, but I think I should get more money? Those are all mental illnesses. Something for nothing-itis. Middle class people deny the importance of money. Oh, money, there's more important things than money. That's what people say when they don't have it so they don't feel so bad. World class knows money is a critical component of life. You have to have it to survive. You need money like you need food. Middle class believe money is their enemy. Money is your friend. Middle class is waiting for their ship to come in. <laughs> the world class, you just build your own ship. There's no ship coming in for you or me. Middle class believes that the financial markets are driven by logic and strategy and math. No, no, no. They're driven by emotion and greed. Go look at that example I was sharing with you, the S&P 500. You see the emotion of fear. People jump in, grow. Middle class believe money is about status. No, it's about creating freedom. Middle class to live beyond their means. World class live below their means. That's how you can save multiples of your age. Because it's so easy for you to make your expenses because you increased your income because you were in the Winner's Edge program. Love to have you here. Learn the better way. It's worth it. Try to break through. You've been programmed to be average. Make an above average decision, decision and get in the group. Watch what happens. Why is it that so few are successful? I can't figure it out. Middle class think money brings stress. Now nah, money brings peace of mind. Middle class people think small, world class think big. Middle class think people are out to get them. Hey, the world class believe that the universe is conspiring to help them. All things are working together for my highest good. Everywhere I turn, there are people there to do me good. Every time the phone rings, we receive new patients. Money freely flows into my life in increasing amounts from multiple sources on a continuous basis, and I love it. See that? I have all the affirmations off the top of my head. I've programmed myself to bring good fortune. Middle class believe their thinking is unrelated to their money. <laughs> the world class knows that thinking is what causes your emotions, which causes your actions, which causes your results. Your thoughts are your life. When you look at someone financially, you're looking at how they think, how they make decisions, their belief system. They are, they are one. It's what you are. You earn what you are. You earn what you are. Just a few more here. Middle class experience some good fortune. They really can't believe it. World class experience good fortune and they wonder what took so long. Of course I deserve it because I put in the time. Middle class believes more money can earn you uh, more stress. World class believes the more money you have, you get less stress. Middle class believe that money can make uh, more problems in your life. World class believes money is what fixes problems. And other people's problems too. Look at the problems you can fix in the world when you got some money. Man, you can fix. In fact, in fact money reaches farther than your hands. 
Hurry up and make some more because you can reach more people with money than you ever can with your hands, if you're really out to help people. Middle class believe that the rich are obsessed with money. The world class believe the rich are obsessed with success and getting good and getting better and reaching and being generous and figuring out new and smarter ways to do things. See, people wonder why someone who makes it big, why do they still work? That's how poor people think. Oh, if I made that money, I would kick back. That's why you don't make any money. I sit there and I wonder that. If someone dropped $100 million into my life, I don't think it's going to change anything I'm doing. Why would it change anything? Probably make some refinements. You got to wake up and do something every day. It's just like in practice. If you're already going to be there for 32 hours a week, let's figure out how you can collect 100 or plus uh, per month, then, then work the same hours and collect a third of that. Why not? You're, if you're there for the same hours, let's just be more productive during that time and help you reach your potential. There's the mathematical ways to do it. Remember now, a chiropractic practice, it is a physics problem to solve. And we have the formula. We have the solution. Middle class believe rich people are selfish, self-absorbed. Really, the world class believe that the middle class are the ones who are selfish and self-absorbed and can't get out of their own head and realize how average they are so that they can then grow. And we are all average. Most of all myself. I have a long way to go. I can improve in every area. My training can improve. My communication skill can improve. My approach, my preparation, my mindset, my awareness of, of things. I've decided to get really good now. Isn't that something? How high up on the chiropractic mountain am I? And I'm sitting here deciding it's time for me to really start to get level-headed and get good. And I'll have chiropractors that are so far down there, they, they can't even see me. They think they can because they'll talk to me or they might know me, but they don't realize how much higher up the mountain I am than them. And they think they're awesome. The people who are the best in any field are the ones that realize how much work they have yet to do. And I'm one of them. I've got a lot of work to do. But I'm doing it. Why don't you join me? Middle class just dream of having enough money to retire. I just if I can just have enough that I can quit because my life is so hard. The world class dream of having enough money to have legacy and reach and impact the communities and possibly impact the world. That's the name of the game. We want to be so good at what we do. We want to be rewarded for it psychologically. We want to be rewarded financially. But we really want to do things at a higher level. We want to think smarter. Think, and it isn't about thinking like rich people or thinking like wealthy people. It's just thinking smarter because that's what that gets you. It isn't about wealth or money. Those are the offspring of just making smarter decisions, understanding more about how the mind works, how the world works, how achievement works, and engaging those uh, tactics and those strategies. And that's what we're here to encourage So as we sum up here, there's consequences to not doing what you really should be doing. You can't tolerate those consequences. It's time to do better. It's time to learn the better road. It's time to engage and get close. You have to volunteer to do that. You have to have a strong enough will to have the oomph to say, I'm going to start to climb up the mountain and build a better life for myself and the people I care about. And remember now, in the end, when people look at you, there's only effort or excuses. When they see you, they see effort or they see excuses. If they see your scripting, they go, ah, is there effort or are there excuses? They look at your website, do they see effort or excuses? Look at your stat sheets, do we see effort or do we see more excuses? Look at what you're collecting, do we see effort or do we see more excuses? And the big excuse is people thinking that they work hard when they don't. Hang out with me for a week. Just hang out with me shoulder to shoulder for seven days and then compare it to what your 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 week looks like. I think you'd be very, very surprised. You would you would get a lesson on what uh 
effort really looks like. And then I could go hang around people and I would be amazed at what they did. Go hang around Goggins. Get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and, I don't know, go run 50 miles to start your day. And then do maybe a 1,000 pull-ups before the day is out. Okay, there's always more that you can do. I'm encouraging you to, you, you to do it. Okay, because what? When we understand, when we apply, we take the principles, we use them for the good of all the people around us, we build the most powerful practice possible, and it does what? It allows you to reach your true potential. Tori out.